Welcome to the Wham Festival, sponsored by the City of Walterboro in partnership with the Colleton County Museum. I'm TJ Grant with the Colleton County Memorial Library. Welcome to this week's episode uh, with painting with Brother Nazar with the blood of a nitty. Hello everyone, I'm Brother Nazar and it's my pleasure to be with you today. Um, we're going to be painting a very important, very historic figure. Her name is Inipi, and it's spelled a little different from how it's pronounced. Inipi is I-N-I-K-P-I, -I -I, Princess Inipi. And I know you might think, well, what is this hat he's got on? Well, this hat is actually a crown. <clears throat> and this crown was given to me um, uh, actually on January 16, 2021. I was named the representative of the king of the Igala people. Uh, and the Igala people is a kingdom in Nigeria. It's in Ida, Koji State, Nigeria. And it's a very ancient kingdom. It's a 5,000 year old kingdom that began in Northeastern Africa and they migrated from Northeastern Africa over a series of hundreds, hundreds of years. And now that the palace is located in Ida, Koji State, Nigeria, um, the king initiated a reconnection for Africans uh, or the Gullah people actually who were removed from the land by force over the colonial era and during the time of European encroachment into uh, Africa. And so with that, uh, he, the uh, ambassador to the kingdom, uh, got in touch with me as I was doing some research for something else. And long story short, I am now the representative of the King of the Gullah people here in South Carolina and kind of by default a whole lot of other places because we are growing rapidly here in South Carolina and there are other people in other states saying, hey, we want in. So this crown represents the Onu Ida, Onu Idi, Edibo, Abba is all. I'm getting used to saying it myself. Um, this, what I'm wearing, is, was given to me by another king. His name was Ka Kabaka Shaka Shava Shiva Kufu Kuru. That's easy to say, right? Ka Kabaka Shaka Shava Shiva Kufu Kuru. So, uh, and it's a lion's tooth and various other, um, what he called medicine to strengthen and keep me strong as I paint these pictures. So, uh, with that, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Inipi and but. Before I begin, I will remove the crown and I will keep this on. Princess Zanippi, I can't just start with her. I'd have to start way back. As I said, this is a 5,000 year old kingdom. It goes all the way back to uh, Anu, which is one of the, um, he's the 13th pharaoh of the 8th dynasty in Kemet. Kemet is now known as Egypt and all of that is northeastern Africa. But it goes all the way back to Anu. And I wanted to begin there because as various invasions occurred in northeastern Africa, uh, there were invasions of the Assyrian. There, were the, there was the Hyksos invasion. There was the Medo-Persian invasions, the Greek invasion, the Roman invasion, then Europe came in. And then now the dominant culture in the region is Islamic. And so over those various invasions, the Igala people who were known as actually Gala then migrated out of the region. Some are in Ethiopia, some are in Uganda, some are in the Lebu people are in Senegal and the main body rested for the most part in Ida Koji State. There are others that continue to migrate in other parts, even crossing the ocean. And so, but for today, we're dealing with coming from the Pharaoh Anu all the way to Inipi. Now, where Inipi enters the story is the the Igala people had a strategic alliance with the Benin people and that was to prevent the invasions that they experienced before they moved from Kemet to occur where they were in um, Ida Koji State where the Niger River and the Benu River converges. That's where the kingdom lies. And so I want to also 
extend greetings to our Igala family worldwide, especially our ambassador and also the, um, the Ata of the Igala people, which means king. So, uh, <clears throat> during this strategic alliance with Benin, uh, it was learned that the Benin people were kidnapping Igala people and selling them to the Portuguese. So the king of the Igala people broke off relations with the Benin kingdom um, and they continue to do this, to snatch people and sell them to the Portuguese. So the king uh, had the priest to consult the oracle to see what would happen if we were to go to war against the Benin kingdom for kidnapping people and selling them to the, the Portuguese. And so when the, the priest consulted the oracle, the oracle said to him um, that the only way that we could fight the Benin kingdom, which the Benin actually had an empire, the only way to uh, withstand, uh, and, and the, the problem is they were such a vast and powerful empire, they would totally destroy the Igala kingdom and sell everyone off into enslavement. And so there was only one way to avoid it. And so the priest told the king the only way to avoid it was for the king to sacrifice what he loved the most. And what he loved the most was his only daughter, Inipi. And this is my rendering of Inipi, the princess Inipi. And so when he, the, the king got the word that uh, you would have to sacrifice your daughter. He was like, there's no way in the world I would sacrifice my daughter. But uh, the king had to consider it and over the next series of weeks, he got depressed, he wouldn't eat, wouldn't drink. And when, his, when and Nippy noticed that he would not drink, eat, he was depressed, she went and tried to ask him what the problem was and he wouldn't, have, he wouldn't tell her. So she went to the priest and that's when she learned that the only way the entire kingdom would survive is if she would be sacrificed. So she went to the council and to the king and told them that in order to save my kingdom and my people and so my father would no longer be just depressed and distressed, she said, I am willing you wanted to sacrifice myself. And so the council agreed and what they did was they sacrificed her and nine of her servants at the point where the Bennu and the uh, the Bennu and the Niger River converges, and when they did that, the Benin Kingdom they rallied their forces and they went to attack the Igala people after Enipi was sacrificed. And when they came to the point where the river rivers converge, this is the scout. And what he saw was all of this destruction. It's like the entire kingdom was on fire and someone had already destroyed it. So what the scout reported back to, to their king was that the Igala kingdom has already been destroyed. There's no need for us to fight. So the army came up and they saw that the kingdom was on fire. Everything was destroyed. So they ended up leaving. So they called off the attack and the kingdom was not destroyed. It was an illusion by the sacrifice of Enipi and the nine servants. And so uh, 10 years later is when the first enslaved Africans arrived in the Americas at Winya Bay, not Jamestown, Virginia. 93 years before Jamestown, Virginia, descendants of Enipi arrived here and they got free that very same within months of their arrival. And so from then all the way to now, there were victories that are lesser known facts that I share in my art. And so what I'm gonna do today is I'm doing a picture of Princess Enipi, but I wanted to cover some of the uh, lesser known facts of the princess, lesser known facts of the Igala Kingdom, and then get into this painting. So we're gonna um, experience Enipi through art. And this is my process when I begin my paintings. First, I take a picture that I'll be working from, kind of like this one. 
and just to develop the concept and then I would grid this picture in one inch blocks one inch grids and then I'll do this to scale and this scale is actually two and a half inches and so I come up with a picture this size from a picture this size and then I decide what I want to do with it whether or not I'm going to actually go with the same colors here and for the purpose of this um, broadcast I will go with the same colors it's just that the background will be a little different so with that I will begin to set up to do my background first and since I'm going to do her headdress in a red color, I'm going to do the background in green. Green always contrasts so very well with uh, red. Yep, and so while I'm doing this, if you wanted to have somebody to uh, Google or whatever search um, means you would like to do to look up Princess Nippy. There's a number of different versions of uh, things that happen, but what I shared with you about Princess Nippy is a true story. It's not like, uh, you know, Sleeping Beauty and Hansel and Gretel, and I don't know if those are true or not, but the Princess Nippy story is very true. And when uh, I did my, had my DNA work done, and when I had my DNA work done, uh, that's how I learned that I was a descendant of the Igala people. And there's so many people now doing DNA work, and I did mine through the University of Pennsylvania. And the University of Pennsylvania is very, very well-respected DNA um, researchers. Doing this, you don't have to be uh, so careful. You can actually just keep going like this. You just want to make sure you don't know, rough up the um, headdress. And once you do the green, you will see the contrast. The contrast is so beautiful when you when you contrast the red against the green. I'm going to go on down here. This will actually speed up the process a little bit. And what I'm using is acrylic paint. You can do this with oil, you can do it with pastel, but I always work in acrylic because acrylic dries fast and you can create the effect of oil and the effect of pastel by using acrylic. Oh, get one of my other brushes and cover a larger surface. And it really makes a difference what type of, um, you want to get brushes with sturdy bristles. Other than that, it'll be all over the place. And I didn't bring my easel. You know, I could say something and be real creative about why I'm using this and not the easel. I forgot my easel with it. <laughs> and I always say, we don't um, make mistakes. We have happy accidents. And that was an unhappy accident, but I am improvising, adapting, and overcoming. So, now, now that I've got these areas closest to it done, I can go very fast. And it really doesn't matter, you know, you can do it like this. You just want to do a good background. And you can play with this with other colors and give it certain kinds of effects. Like if you want it to appear like she's in a forest, you can actually do something like this. Okay? And this is a horizon if you do it all the way on the other side. As a matter of fact, when I get, when I get finished with this, I will. Um, change it just up, up just a little bit so you see what I'm talking about but 
This is moving only because I'm improvising and I don't have it on an easel. But like I said, and, and my process, like I said, and gridding this is so that I can do it to scale. To scale means um, if it's, you know, it's smaller and I want to do it larger, but I want to make sure that I get the proportion of her face and head and everything correct, nose and all of that, then it's, it's wise to do it to scale. And I'm not trying to get a portrait of her, because if you want a portrait, it's too late, because she was in the, the year 15, 16 when she left us. And so, um, this is not for portrait, this is actually for a fact. It's, to, it's impressionistic. So you will see how she, you will, you, so I want you to know the story and get a picture, at least my mental picture, of how she looked. There's a statue of her in Koji State. Now, I'm being real careful because I'm still using a large brush to do it, to get around a small nose. And all I gotta do is get a smaller brush and not be so, uh, take risks like I just did. But I do it sometimes with the bigger brush. And when I, when I get into the headdress, you see what I mean? It, it really works good with this green as the background. So, we're, um, I hope everybody was faring well from the uh, COVID. Nobody, um, hope nobody got sick. And if you got sick, I hope you recovered exceptionally well. And I'm holding my breath so I don't mess her lips up because she might hit me. She doesn't want to be painted today. Okay. So I continue. I'm getting these tight spaces. Gotta be very careful. Once you get around them, then you can go fast again. So, like I said, I hope everyone is feeling fine and no one got too ill. And if you did get ill, I hope you recovered well. So, I, I think we're looking good on time. At least I hope we're looking good on time. I don't, I don't do it like Bob Ross. Bob Ross has a way of of keeping you, uh, you know, entertained and feeling real good. I like to take questions while I'm painting. And since I can't get any questions right now, I have to make them up <laughs> as I go along. So, now, so I have these clips to hold this on here while I'm doing this. And, just in case anybody wanted to know that, and so, I think it's still looking good. Now, once this area kind of calms down or actually gets um, dry, I will put in a, a horizon line. Okay, now, I will have to grab some water. And so let me do this. Hope everybody's doing good. And what, with acrylic, it doesn't take long for this to dry. What I'm doing now is with acrylic, you always need water to 
keep your brushes clean. And this is a spray bottle that I use because the paint that I'm working with, as you continue to work, sometimes it has a tendency to get hard. So if you get a spray bottle and you spray, spray it, you'll keep it moist so you can work with it. So this is a, a trick using um, acrylic. You cannot do that with oil. Oil dries very slow. Sometimes it takes weeks for it to dry. And I can't work that long on a picture. So now I am going to use red and I have a couple of different red abstract and multi surface. Um, and this, I'm going to use it right on the same plate with my green. And two different types of art. Uh, the abstract is much thicker than the green. I will now begin with her head wrap. And I wish I could say, if you got any questions, but if you got any questions, you have to check check me out and um tune in and get with Miss Sheila and I'll have to answer it on the next episode. <laughs>
another paper, TP1000, and then you you get the, the um, you press this into the TP1000 or the toilet paper and allow all the water to come out of it. Right now we are getting the colors in. This is my process. Before you worry about the lines that you need to get in there to make it really look like a head wrap. Now I'm painting over the lines that I have here because I'm pretty I know pretty much where the lines need to be from the various areas right here that are um, where the lines work. So, let's see what other questions we might have. What about this area? Well, that area is going to be where ornaments will be on our head. And the ornaments are really intricate. And I'm going to be using the back of the brush. And so that's going to look like kind of pretty bright. But that's really the best way to get that ornamental look or look like beads on the brush, on her head. All right, so. I'm going to use the green to put the lines in where this head wrap folds. So I'm going to look at this and kind of use that as a guide. black, you can use green, but you definitely need a darker color to get these folds in here. Okay, let me take a look at it. Yeah, that's good enough for government work. I know y'all heard that before. Okay, so now, I think we'll get this um, portion done. And notice, I got the red and the green. And you know, like when you're eating peas and you're eating rice and stuff, and you don't want the, the, um, the juice from the beans and stuff to get on your rice or get on your cornbread, that's kind of what I did here. I made sure they didn't mix. I only wanted them to mix on here. Okay, now. So, once this dries, then I can go in and put the beads on there, and it'll make the beads actually look brighter. And this. So, if you didn't want to make the beads, you don't have to. You can actually go with a brighter color and just make it like this is the top part of her dress. And it actually saves time. If you wanted to save time. about this, okay, 
this kind of goes like this. of the pencil. You can start there. For the sake of time, I'm going to just keep going in like this. got some decorative beads on her head. And okay, now, where do I go? I go to here. Let's see, gotta to tone up her neck. And for the sake of time, I put the paint on and what I'm going to do is step out of the frame, but I'll keep talking to you so you know I'm not leaving the room. And I am um, taking the paint off. It's called dry brush. This technique, you put the paint on and then you kind of rub it on like you're taking it off. So that's what I mean by acrylic. You can do a number of things with acrylic that you can't do with oil or pastel. So like here, you can Give it tone, but I noticed that's not dry, so that's not working right right there because of the paint on there. So we don't want to panic. We just want to begin to shape her face and her chin and her neck. because my time is limited. And so I'm gonna do something here. Limited time, limited time. brush is really dry right about now because I'm not putting any more on. I'm just doing what you would call a dry brush technique. sake of time to get the eyebrow in.
And on this picture, as you can see, because of the shadow, you can barely see her eyes. But we know it's there. stages and the next stage before I even finish that is I'm going to finish this dress on the next one. Okay, now, as I did before, are we looking good? I think we're looking good. So, Get some of the beads on while I wait for some of this to dry. So we're going to do this like we did the other ones. These are ornaments, royal ornaments for a princess in Nippy. And remember, Princess Nippy is a very important person in Igala history. Igala, I-G-A-L-A. -A. Look up the Igala people. It's a very important aspect of not only of African American history, but American history. And I'm only using the back of the pencil and dipping it in the paint and putting it on the work. ornaments. Now, there is something that I use so I don't have to put my hand on the paper that I didn't bring it with me. But it has a cushion on it and what I could do is this with it. And uh, but I didn't bring it. I don't want to confuse anybody about it. So, I hope your picture is coming out well. Mine is, is getting there. And if I'm skipping these areas because for the sake of time, it takes a long time sometimes when you do a picture. And if we had hours to work with, that'd be one thing, but I don't, I have minutes. But I want you to get the concept of what I'm doing. And on your own time, you can actually uh, put as many and as decorative beads or no beads as you want. Don't 
feel like um because if this one like these here just go right back in you can do this with them you think wow it faded don't worry about it just go right back in and do this but I am moving for the sake of time and it doesn't have to go in this order it can go in any order that you would like for it to go because it's a decorative bead with the beads I will shade the back of her head to give it give it depth because these have to actually have something that would show you know depth and I'm using purple you don't want to just use black because black will take it, you know, way too deep. Um, and, and at times when you don't want it to be as deep. So, and the shading and the rare is always darker. Depends on where you want the light at. So the light is coming from this direction. So the shade should be where I'm working now. And purple is always really good for shading. I was told once, use purple for, for women and use blue for men. And I, I, I couldn't get that out of you know, that was, I'm like, how would the picture know? <laughs> but that's what I was told. So the thing is, you can experiment with these, and depends on what you you know decide works best for you. The purple is better. Use purple. I find it, it works really well for shading real off again. questions do you have? Hmm, let's see. When it comes to Princess and Nippy, why doesn't everybody know about her? That's a good question. Princess and Nippy, her, what she did was so brave and so powerful. The British didn't really like what she did because she inspired other people. And they didn't want people to be inspired because then they figured the people would fight against them. But what she did was really powerful, really brave. 
and it didn't inspire them necessarily to fight against them, but when her sacrifice was so that the people would never be enslaved by anybody, and many of the people who actually had already been enslaved managed to get free. And many people attribute it to Enipi's bravery and her sacrifice. So, for some people, that's a problem. For others, that is really great. And so, I'm using purple here too.
then I am going to kind of close this one out. This week's episode, The Blood of a Nippy with Brother Nizal. Thank you for your time. Thank you.